Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, starting with the 144,000 men of Israel, which consists of the servants, the prophets, whom have been ordained since the foundations of this earth to sing this new song, which comes in the form of this gospel, which would be preached throughout all four corners of this earth and rest upon the ears of the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children of Israel, who may be scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson and speaking on some stuff that's been happening in Babylon as of last week. I'm sure you Aki and Akwatha are aware of. And, uh, you know, this is very significant. You know, for those of us that have, uh, you know, eyes to see, you know, we understand that Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai is moving on the daughter of Babylon, man. You know, these mere mortals, you know, think it's just, you know, an, uh, <laughs> uh, something that just happened or, you know, it's a, uh, what's the term they would use? Um, you know, it's just a coincidence, you know, but no, man. Hey, these things that are taking place on the planet Earth, okay, are being completely orchestrated by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You see, and what it, what it is, is Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai showing us, the believers, starting with the servants, the prophets, who are to be able to discern these things, okay, and, and marry it to prophecy and bring these things out, right, in effort to comfort, okay, the weak hands and feeble knees of the elect, okay? First and foremost, man, you see, because at the end of the day, okay, we've been given the vision Okay, the men that have been ordained to sing this song. Lord willing, we are those men. You see, so ultimately, all right, what you've seen happen in the past week, all right, it's, 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 not a, it's not a coincidence, all right? It's a sign of the times, man, all right? It's a sign that Esau's world is on its way out. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Second Ezra, this. Second Ezra, chapter 6. Let's start at verse 7, and it reads, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? And when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And this is Ezra's inquiring um, of the end of the time, man. He was, uh, you know, having a... He's, he had had many uh, conversations uh, with the angel Uriel. Okay. And, and he was being given visions, all right? He was commanded to fast, you know, only only eat, you know, only, don't eat meat, you know, only eat, you know, greens, right, fast. He got, he was given a heavy vision when he fasted for like, I believe fasted for like seven days. He was given a heavy vision, you see, but ultimately, all right, our forefather Ezra, like the prophets, okay, was inquiring on the end, the end of the heathen. You see, understanding that what? That means the erecting of the kingdom of heaven, which is going to reign forever. Go read Daniel 2 and 44. Go read uh, 2 Ezra 9, okay, verses 6 down. Okay, he was inquiring, man. Check this out. 2 Ezra 6 and 8, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, why is Abraham and Isaac being brought up? Because the seed line, okay, the seed that was that was the, that that's who the uh, the blessing, okay, the 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 birthright was gonna go to. You see, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, man, this is why they're being brought up. Listen to this: from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, and we know Jacob, we know Esau was put by. Okay, and Jacob was the one given the birthright and the blessing by Isaac, right? Yeah, he yaiqwabbed Esau, but at the end of the day, it was meant to go down like that. That's part of the movie. 
Okay, it was always it was always meant to be established through uh through Jacob. All right, that wasn't just a a, a scratch in the movie. <laughs> a mistake was made. You know, one of the characters that are being controlled by Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai were able to just uh, to, to play a role and uh, take a take a part of the role, take a part of the movie that was not ordained to them. No, man. It tells you in, in uh, Romans, the ninth chapter. Let me just go get this real quick for you new listeners that may not understand that concept. Check it out, Romans nine and eleven. For the children being not yet born, this is talking about Jacob and this is talking about um, Jacob and Esau. Matter, matter of fact, let me start up. Let's start at verse nine. For this is the word of promise, okay, and that's an oath. That's where you get that word oath. An oath goes into a promise. All right, and Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai made what? Covenants and oaths with who? Israel. Okay, no other nation. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. Right? Check it out. Sarah is who? Abraham's wife. Let's continue on. And not only this, but when Rebecca. Okay, when Rebecca also had conceived, okay, and this is who's this is Isaac's wife. Okay, also have conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, right? Which Isaac was uh Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it. For the children being not yet born, listen, listen closely. Because this, what, this what you're going to find out is this, this is going into predestination. See, Jacob was preordained to get the birthright, man. The movie just had to play out the way it did. Neither having done any good or evil. Uh-oh. That the purpose of who? Power. According to election. Might stand. See? So Jacob was elected. Chosen. From the foundation of the earth, man. That's the way it was going to play out. Not of works, but of him that calleth, man. <laughs> Let's get a little more. It was said unto her that elder shall serve the younger. Right? Abr um, excuse me. Esau came out first. Right? But at the end of the day, he's going to serve the younger. He's going to serve us. Right? And you have a preliminary to that uh, during the time of uh, Solomon. Okay. Romans 9 and 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Yeah, for you new listeners. Yahweh Bashim Shai, he hates. All right. He hates a specific people. And that's Esau Edom, the so-called white man, man. He hates this man. All right. Hey, it's written. Let's go back. He put by Esau. See? Let's go back to 2 Ezra 6. In verse 8 again, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hail of Esau. And that's the spirit, you know, because, you know, every time, you know, we bring out, you know, these digital epistles or go on to the highways and byways and, you know, prophesy our Savior, you know, uh, I'm sorry, um, profess our Savior openly, right? And, you know, prophesy, you know, whether it be to the wind or, you know, to a likely, you know, hopefully let me for me for repentance or even to scoffers, man. When scoffers come up and we have a back and forth. Hey, at the end of the day, Esau is being pulled down. We got hell. We got our spirit. Spiritually, we got our hands on his hell, bringing his system down. You see? Because the truth's going out. You see that? That's Again, that's why things are happening at such a rapid rate. Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is beginning to work. Okay? He's moving in on evil E. 2 Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world. You see that? Esau is, a, is the end of an eon. 
of space of time. That's what that world's going into. There's three types of worlds. Okay? You have the world as in the earth. Okay? The whole globe. All right? You have the world as in an eon, the space of time. Right? And you have the world as in um, cosmos. Right? Which is the Greek, right? Which goes into um, a government. Right? Or an ornament arrangement. Like, you know, you have the world of sports, the world of fashion. Right? You have the world of a world of nations. Right? <laughs> you see? This is talking about an eon here. For Esau is the end of the world, and he's in, he's the end of a space of time. We're living in Esau's Esau's e eon right now. Esau's world. Okay, that's why his his face is on the money. Alright? This is why he's sitting on the high horse. He's sitting on the throne. He has the he has the uh, the scepter in his hand. Right? But hey, Yahweh Bashimel Shah is coming to smack the scepter out of his grip. You see, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth man. See, so we're going to be coming into a time, into a world, into an eon of Jacob. Okay, and it's going to be a divine one. Because the rulers, which are going to consist of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay, are going to be immortal. Okay, that regime is going to be, hey, the whole nation is going to be immortal. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be an immortal rulership, man. You see, it's gonna be a divine kingdom, as done as, as what's done in heaven is gonna come down to the earth, upon Israel ruling, man. And that's when righteousness is gonna be established. You see, but upon the end of Esau's world, it's gonna come with uh with signs, man. It's going to come with signs and wonders. And this is something we understand as believers. Let's go ahead. Why, why do we believe it? Because it's written, man. That's what the Lord said. Second Ezra is 9. We'll get some information after this. I have some information I have. Uh, second, Ezra, second Ezra is 9. Let's start at verse 5. Five and five, uh, Verse 6 is the point. For like as all that is made in the world had a beginning and an end. See? And that goes for you too, Esau. That's why we just read that Esau is the end of the world, man. Okay, you had a beginning in the form of the Greeks. All right, you fell in the form of the Western Roman Empire. All right, and you and you were revived in the form of Babylon, man, during the time of the Renaissance period. Okay, you were revived in the form of America. And now it's time for you to come to an end again. And this is it. Okay, this is it, man. It's over after, after this. It's, it's game over, man. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end. And the end is manifest, man. The end is going to manifest. It's going to come to fruition. So what do you got to look out for? Second Ezra 9 and 6. Even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and Signs, man. Effects and signs, man. Tokens, man. All right. And this is one of them. Right. This is from Science Friday, right? I figured I'll grab it from here. Many sources were speaking on it. It's dated uh, July 19th, uh, 2024. A small meteor blazes over New York City, man. Check it out. And it's, it's ironically enough, it went over the Statue of Liberty. The Lord's been zapping the Statue of Liberty with lightning. These are all tokens, man. Check it out. Tuesday morning, some New York area residents heard a loud boom and saw a daytime fireball streaking overhead. According to observers, a small meteor entered the Earth's atmosphere over New York City. Passed by the Statue of Liberty. All right, that's a sign. Okay. And proceeded west to New Jersey. Moving at some 38,000 miles per hour. Media experts said that the object, estimated to be around a foot in size, posed no threat as debris from an object that small would have burned up before reaching the ground. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the point. But you see that? Hey, could they, could it have been a chariot? Could have been. Okay, Esau, Esau likes to make these explanations 
you know, based off his based off his knowledge, you know, but ultimately he always wants to cancel out anything divine. See? But this is something that those of us that have been blessed with the spirit uh, with the gift of faith, we're not going to we're not going to neglect that fact. We understand that the Lord is working, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is working. You see, and this was a sign, okay, that he's on his way. This is a sign that he's on his way, man. All right, another sign that he's on his way is this right here. Uh, I got this from ABC News. Right, this is dated July 19th, so Friday. Right, what happened, I believe that meteorite situation happened on Tuesday of last week. Uh, but this was on Friday, July 19th, 2024. Check out this headline, that's all we need. A global internet outage is affecting airlines, banks, media, and offices from the U.S., to Australia, and even my job was affected as well. Not my specific job duty, but within my within my within my um within my line of work, there was an area that was affected. Uh, within the, within my line of work, it didn't affect me directly, but it did affect um another again another section of my line of work and you know clientele as well that utilized that service. You see? So this really did go down. Yeah, yeah. I seen that uh that blue screen with that sad face. <laughs> you know? And here it is. They're telling you, when you get a couple of videos on this, they're telling you all oh, we, you know, we were doing a, a a software update, you know, we know what the problem is, you know, it, it's okay. You know, sister system will be back up and running. See the way Esau works, man, this man is a this man is is a deceptive demon. Okay, he works with, he works under gradualism. This could have been a, tr a, a trial error, a test run. You see, but he'll lead the people to believe that it was just a glitch in the system and, you know, it was due to a software update. You know, trying to keep you people um, comfortable in your mind, man. So you're not on guard and prepared for what's coming. Hey, <laughs> we got a surprise for you, man. Well, the Lord does. Yahweh Bashim Yahusha has a surprise for you. When they shall say, when they what's that? When they shall say peace and safety, you see, hey, it ain't all good in the hood, man. Let's go get let Matthew. Let's go get that Matthew. No, let's get this first. Let's get this. Let's get this in Luke. Luke twenty one, because Yahweh Shai himself told us to watch out for things like this. All right, his his uh. His disciples inquired as well, just as Ezra just did. And we'll listen to what Yahweh Shai said. Let's start at verse 7 and jump down. The book of St. Luke, chapter 21, and verse 7, and it reads, And they asked, and they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign, uh-oh, there goes that word sign again, right? Will there be when these things shall come to pass. Let's jump down to verse 10. Right? Then said he unto them, this is what Yahweh Shai said unto them, red letter, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We're seeing that. Okay, this is why we see the formulation of the BRICS nations and nations uh, deserting the fiat currency. Okay? Coming up with their own global currency. This is why you have uh, certain NATO members uh, leaving, as, as like France, okay, which France was one of the uh, little horns you can read about in Daniel, man, that were plucked up by the root, okay, so that's the spirit, you see these things are happening, man, all right, and great earthquakes, get an earthquake app, get an earthquake app, you will see earthquakes are popping off more frequently than you think. And great earthquakes should be in diverse places. And that's the point. Diverse places, they're happening in real time. Right? And famines. That's coming. And pestilences, man. c 19 Right? And there's more coming, apparently. They they they, they prophesy. <laughs> we know they're behind it via the CDC. But anyways. And fearful sights. And great signs. There goes that word signs again, man. Tokens, man. Show there be from heaven, but you got to have the spiritual eyes of to see them. And it says, What in great signs shall be there from heaven? You see, and when you get this, uh, 
real quick. You get this word signs real quick. We know what it means, but it's always good to look these things up. Say Mayan. Say Mayan. Strong's G, 4592. Say Mayan. Say Mayan. Right. A sign. Right. Mark. Right. Token. See? That by which a person or a thing is distinguished from others and is known. A sign. Prodigy. Portent. Right. An unusual occurrence. Transcending the common course of nature. Yeah, that has been happening, man. These lunar eclipses, solar eclipses. Okay? We've had uh, uh, weather patterns that can't be explained. Okay? Divine intervention taking place in the heavens that can't be explained away. The chariot sightings. See? Check it out. Of signs portending remarkable events soon to happen. You see? Boom. Of signs portending remarkable events soon to happen, man. And this is what we understand. You see, because we have the spirit. From the, from, the, from the teachers, from my elders and apostles on down to you believers, man. We have that foresight. We're able to foresee the evil and hide ourselves, man. While these niggas telling you it was a trial run and we know what happened. And, and the, hey, this nigga's really playing and plying, seeing how the world reacts. Seeing how he, you know what I mean? See, see how, see how devastating it was to certain portions of this man's system, because he needs to crash the system, in efforts to erect uh, this fourth industrial revolution, man. You see, but a lot of you people are blind to that fact. All right, and all this is is the form of Yahweh Shai creeping up on the world. You see, because these things have to happen before Yahweh Shai comes. You see, but we're not, we're not sleeping. Those of us he's given the spirit to. Let's close out right here. We quoted it earlier. When they should stay peace and safety. Let's read up on that. The book of First Thessalonians, uh, uh, the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five. Let's start at verse one. Verse three is the point. But of the times and the seasons, brethren. You have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because, hey, we are aware of these things via the Holy Spirit. Okay? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has given us the ability to see beyond where we are. Okay? We're able to measure the times, man, through the prophecies. See? The prophecies is the foundation. Okay? Without understanding prophecy, you're going to get snared. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Yahweh Bashim is going to creep up. He's already creeping up, man. And the phone's chiming in. He's already creeping up. He's creeping up, man. But on those of you that are not watching and paying attention. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, here's the point. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, man. You see? So, A, if you don't got Yahweh Shai, you don't have a chance. If you're leaning upon your own understanding, Thinking that your uh, your bomb shelter or you know your one hundred your one hundred gun your one hundred gun collection, okay, is gonna save you and deliver you. Your 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 uh, your food pantry, okay, that you got uh, 
lock, stocked, and barreled, man, loaded up. You think that's going to preserve you and keep you? You got another thing coming, man. It's going to take divine intervention for you to escape. And the time's coming. It's getting close. Yahweh Bashim Shah is moving in, man. Okay, what happened in the past week? Hey, that's not a light thing. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shah, those of us that have eyes to see and ears to hear, we understand that. You running out of time, Jake. Repent, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, speckled birds that may look like the other nations, but your bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you resonate with this truth. Repent. You're running out of time. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwedash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwath were edifying. Shalom.